everyone. Thank you so very much for joining my first webinar, my first Flow State of Mind webinar. Um, I just want to check the sound. I'm using these headphones so that you can get a clear audio quality. You might experience some jungle sounds behind me. I'm here in Costa Rica conducting this webinar for you. And I'm just so glad that you took the time to listen in and to uh, learn some Flow State of Mind pro tips that are going to help you really establish more of a flow in your life. So make sure that you have a pen, a journal, something to write with. Make sure you're in a quiet space. Turn off any distractions. Uh, turn off your cell phone if you have that on, just so that you're able to really tune in and focus and listen. Try, try not to be multitasking or you know checking social media as we go through this webinar, but really uh, check in with yourself and firstly, why you even showed up at this webinar. Obviously, there was something that you wanted to learn, some, something that needs to be uncovered. Um, so I invite you as an opening before we begin this webinar uh, to just take a few moments and breathe. You can sit upright and close your eyes, just rest your hands in your lap, and just take a few moments to really settle into your position, settle into your body, settle into your breath. We'll just walk you through a simple breathing exercise just to allow you to get grounded before we begin. So close the eyes, inhale through the nose. As you exhale, let your shoulders drip away from your ears, releasing any stress, any tension. Making a ha sound at the back of the throat. And try that again. Inhale through the nose. Relax the face muscles, relax the jaw, and exhale. And do that three more times on your own. Just inhaling and exhaling, making a pause at the top. And start to really tune into what it is that you want to gain out of this webinar. What is your highest truth? Exhale. Try it again. Inhale. Maybe you wanted to create something. Maybe you want to form an extra income stream. Call that a side hustle. Exhale. Maybe you want to get clear on some goals or learn how to better organize your time. Really tune into what that inner want is so, so that as you're Listening in, you retain more information that goes directly with the goal or your personal objective. <clears throat> All right, so let's get started. You can open your eyes. I just want to share a little bit about uh, myself, kind of why I feel qualified to share this information with you. Um, so just a little background on me. Uh, I am most commonly known as the, the founder of Club Bell Yoga. So I founded that system in 2011 under the guidance of my coach, Scott Sonnen. And I had been studying with him uh, for about seven years prior to that. So I'd been really familiar with his systems. I'd sat in on many seminars, uh, been in many of his videos and DVDs and the Prasara Yoga book. So I had had an opportunity to really get to know him and coach with him personally. And through that, uh, that those years of experience, I actually was in Costa Rica when I developed the, club, the first Club Bell Yoga Flows. So I started integrating clubs into flow into vinyasa flows as a way to cross train for yoga. Um, and since then, we've created four online training programs, including a Club of Yoga prenatal one. And we have instructors and people practicing, students practicing all over the world. So it's been an amazing platform for me to really build, um, build this system, this performance-based system for both yoga and focus. And it actually lends itself really well to the coaching that I do now, which is flow state of mind coaching. Um, I also teach Club Bell Yoga seminars. I've been traveling around the world teaching to all walks of life. Uh, it's a flow really crosses cultures. It's not bound into American culture, but any, uh, any international student that I've worked with also experiences flow when they, when they practice. Um, I also teach uh, flow fit seminars, so I'm really educating instructors. Generally, they're people that are really wanting to go into a more specialized focus, so they're wanting to learn about the science of flow. So I educate instructors on that. I've been doing that for about three years now in conjunction with Club Bell Yoga since 2011. And as the more I study flow, the more I really get to see the, the people affected by flow. It, it really makes me passionate to want to share this and also uh, apply the principles in a business setting as well in, in and in a way to kind of organize your time because the brain science is the same. And you can really train yourself to perform well by applying these principles. So everything that I'm sharing with you is from years of experience uh, teaching 
in both America and abroad, and also studying with a master, Scott Sonnen, for uh, 12 years now. Um, so I'm also a head performance coach at RMAX International, and what that means is there's, I think there's about five in the, in the world right now, and what that means is that we, I, I'm the director of the yoga for our organization, but I also stand in and help assist at TACFIT seminars, uh, CST seminars, I'm part of the, uh, the organization team in developing new programs and new initiatives. Uh, so I hold that title very dearly, and it's an honor to be able to be part of such an innovative organization that has so much camaraderie, and I've built so many friendships over the years being part of this organization, and I plan on uh, being with this organization for a very, very long time. So head coach at RMAX International is another uh, title of mine. I also uh, was a a kinesiology adjunct faculty member at a local university. So in sharing information about kinesiology and, um, and practical applications in the field with the youth, that's another area that I feel really passionate about. I feel like we have this new generation that's coming in and we're, they are equip equipping themselves with the tools to really teach people about a wellness and balance. There's this emerging industry to integrate mind-body exercise and somatic exercise um, with personal development coaching and wellness coaching. So I see a trend in the wellness industry that we are starting to become um, life coaches as well as physical movement coaches. Um, I've also taught at a few yoga festivals, Wanderlust, Victoria Yoga Conference. Um, I have submitted to Shape Magazine. I blog often and contribute to other online uh, entrepreneurship-based uh, online magazines. And I'm also a business owner. So I own a local studio in Bellingham, Washington called Fit Body Wellness. And I provide uh, elite coaching for, uh, for people that really want to change not only their physical body, but also their, their mind. And then most recently in the past year and a half, I've developed a program called Flow State of Mind Coaching. And so now that allows me to travel uh, around the world and, and work while I travel and coach people through Skype and through digital mediums. And that's a big piece of why I want to share this information with you because I feel, I feel like there's so much information to share that even if you just take a snippet of it, it might affect you and start creating change in your own life. Um, I have a few other side projects that I'm involved in. I'm working on um, this project called Urban Flow Fest, where I integrate uh, music and flow arts and educating people on the science of flow, so the psychology of what it means to be in flow. So I'm extremely passionate about it, and I can't wait to get into this call and get into the content. So what this call is about, this call is about uh, three things. Firstly, how to step into or tap into your own personal flow and make positive behavioral change. Uh, so the brain, hmm, when it's in that state of flow, you can think of an activity that brings you flow. For example, snowboarding or surfing or being with your children and being completely unplugged, walking in nature. That moment when you get completely present, completely grounded, your action and awareness merge and you're able to uh, either time will slow down or it will speed up or it will just kind of hover. But you're in that space of presence. And that's when I talk about flow state of mind, that's what I'm talking about is getting into that place where things feel effortless and you're completely um, in joy about the situation that you are involved in. So what if your work life felt like that? What if you had flow in your daily life and every activity and every project and every meeting that you went to, you were able to be in that state? So that's the first secret that I'm going to share with you is we're going to talk about uh, how to tap into your inner flow and make positive behavioral change. The second thing we're going to talk about is leaving multitasking behind. All right, so where does that come from? Uh, the most common thing I hear from people when they're presented with a new task, a new opportunity, even a new engagement, like coming out to you know, have dinner with a new group of friends, I'm too busy. And people feel that overwhelm, that sense of overwhelm, that busyness, because they're multitasking all the time and they're not taking a, a focused approach to delegating what type of task they're doing. They're trying to clump it all into one. And 
what I really teach with flow state of mind coaching is really how to differentiate between creativity, productivity, uh, research, and self-care. And those are all different categories that require a different sort of energy and a different focus when you're performing those tasks and performing them well. So we're going to get into some details on how to leave multitasking behind. <clears throat> the third thing is that flow state of mind essence. We're really going to look at um, how to be completely present with everything that you're doing so that no matter if you're at a meeting, working on a creative task, working on emails, that you are in a state of flow and it seems effortless and it doesn't put you into a fight or flight mode or put you into a mode that feels like it's draining energy from you um, or, or causing you stress or causing your adrenal glands to um, pump out excessive adrenaline or ramp up your cortisol levels. So we really want to refine that so that when you're doing your daily work, you are in a state of peace. So those are the three main things that we're going to be talking about today. Um, I'd like to share a little bit about my story and how I came to develop this sort of method of flow state of mind coaching for, for business owners and for everyday people that want to seek more balance and create a mindset of flow. Uh, so let's back up a few years. So uh, let's say about the time when my son was one to two years old. Um, so during that time, he's three and a half now, so it was just a few years ago, but uh, about two and a half years ago, uh, maybe three years ago, I was traveling around the world, um, teaching seminars. I think I went to 10 different countries in the second year of my son's life and had to leave home quite a bit. And every time I stepped on a plane, I'd have this anxiety and this stress of, you know, a part of me is at home. My son is away from me. Uh, but I still went. I, I still wanted to pursue this club of yoga that I had created and certify people and build the system. So I did that. I also managed my Fit Body Wellness business at home solo. So I was the only one working there, managing my whole entire client load. I was writing content, writing uh, blogs, consistently writing content, uh, educational content for club of yoga on Facebook. Back when Facebook uh, pages were popular, and you got you know fifteen thousand. Uh, responses or 15,000 likes on, you know, a blog post. So it was a really exciting time. I was, I was creating content. I was creating Primal 12. I was um, also working on other projects and, and video filming, making my, building my YouTube channel. So I was in a state of doing a lot of things, not to mention being a adjunct faculty member at the university and being a, a full-time new mom. So uh, during that time, everyone, I had friends that would ask me, they're like, where are you going next? How do you do it all? How do you manage it all? And I didn't really know at the time, but I was actually practicing flow state of mind. So I had been so accustomed to training flow in my physical practice. And as an athlete for many years, know that you, you can really train your brain to perform better. So anytime I had a race when I was in cross country, I'd always... Um, visualize the the race every step of the way and I would visualize the ending so in able to uh, in order to be able to handle how much stress and work and projects and input I was having there was you know I was getting calls all the time getting requests to come all different places uh, to teach this club of yoga in order to really stay grounded I had to tap into my own inner flow so a couple years went by um, we had got a ton of feedback on the seminars. People really wanted, to, it was so much information and people wanted to um, add an extra day because there's so much information on the science of flow in these two days. So I listened to the feedback and I added a second day to our Club of Yoga seminars. And you know what happened? We had to cancel an entire year of seminars because the price went up and people weren't able to take that extra day. Even though the feedback consistently across the board was we need an extra day to absorb the, this information um, what happened was the the market couldn't bear what we had changed the prices to so it was a blessing in disguise everything happens for a reason the universe never gives you anything that you can't handle and during that time I had to really take a look at who I am and who I wanted to be do I really just want to be this club bell yoga girl as everyone started to kind of I, I started to really identify with that or people really started to kind of label me as just that and I knew I had something more to offer so I took that time to really go inward actually hired a business coach and worked on my fit body wellness business worked on the club of yoga um, longer term plan and developed my own flow state of mind coaching during that process um, with years of training clients and how many 
hours I've logged with teaching yoga and different personalities that I've worked with, I was able to apply the performance principles and the psychological principles and my expertise on flow science to create an, an actual program for people to go through and start to put these things into action and to practice these things. So that's really what we're going to be talking about today. Um, so during that time when I was reinventing myself and taking a step back from teaching seminars, that's when I went into really developing the body of work that I have today. And it started um, with a one-on-one -on -one course that takes you through each energetic center and, and helps you to learn if you have any energetic blocks in any of those areas. So in our energetic centers, we have our root, our foundation, which is at the base of our spine. That's our, um, our ability to care for ourselves. So that's our... Uh, our home, how we keep our home, it's how we keep our body, it's our nutrition, it's our daily exercise, uh, it's our, our physical body, it's the, the walls of our house in our physical environment. Secondly, we have our, our second energetic center, the creative center, that's where, uh, also where our sort of romantic and passionate relationships are. So they kind of go hand in hand, uh, but in our creative center, that's uh, an area where um, you can tap into different creative mediums, figuring out where you are strongest, so what your best creative medium is, what, what your best um, environment to be creative is, is in. And then we move into our third energetic center here, solar plexus, um, and this is our uh, willpower. This is our discipline, it's our ability to really get, that, get things done. It's our, it's our drive to move forward in life. And... By exploring these energetic centers, you might find that you either have A, an excessive energetic center, or B, a deficient uh, energetic center. Some might also be in balance. But by taking a look inward and examining these areas through personal development, through introspection, um, that's when we can start to really get to know these areas better and see if there's any, any blockages. So I'll just kind of take you, continue to take you through. We've got the heart energetic center, and that's our ability to... Um, to show ourselves compassion and to show others compassion. So it's our ability to uh, uh, talk nicely to ourselves, our internal dialogue, our self-love, and, and also um, the actions that you take in showing yourself self-love. So that really ties in a lot to self-care. And also our relationships with our loved ones, our spouses, um, our, our children, our coworkers. So how do we express ourselves through compassionate um, action and, and language. And then moving in a little bit higher, even more about language is the throat energetic center. So in that area, that's your ability to communicate efficiently and succinctly and you know, hold the eye gaze and, and use emotional intelligence to really tap into what it is that you want to say. Sometimes if you have like a lump in your throat or you feel like you're constricted in that area, you might not be really able to speak your truth. You might be holding back. So that might indicate that you might have an energetic block there. Moving into the third eye, the space between the eyebrows, and that's directly um, connected to your pineal gland in the middle center of your brain. And here, this is where our intuition is, our inner knowing, our ability to see where we're going in the future. Like, What is our, what is our grander vision? Uh, and then crown. Crown is our connection to universal consciousness, so our ability to really tap into our collective as a humanity and, and our co connection to this planet and what we're doing to help heal the planet. So the flow state of mind uh, coaching all falls back on really looking inward and seeing where your blocks are and, and making yourself strong and balanced in each of those energetic centers so that you can create a, a quick feedback loop from the time that you think an idea between the time that you manifest it onto the physical plane. Now, I specialize in teaching these principles, these are ancient principles, um, in a very non-dogmatic way and in a really practical way. So if you'd like to do any extra research on energetic centers, please do. Um, but one quick way to really understand what energetic centers are, are they concentrated nerve ganglia in certain areas of your body. So if you were to look at your cadaver uh, um, under... Um, a different, maybe a microscope, or you can actually zoom in and see where the concentrated nerve ganglia are, you have bundles in each of those areas that I just described. So when you are balanced, usually it's, uh, it's calm. You're not getting a lot of inflammation in that area. You're not getting a lot of uh, negative feedback. 
But when you are out of balance, your body tells you that and has a somatic response to let you know that you're out of balance, either either efficient, hyperactive, or um, deficient, feeling blocked, feeling sluggish, feeling not, not able to really tap into that specific area. <clears throat> All right, so let's get into the content today. So how to tap into flow, make positive behavioral change. Get out your pens. There are several things that you can start doing right away, and the two easiest things that you can do are meditate in the morning, 10 minutes, and journal directly after. So I'm gonna give you two simple and easy ways to get into meditation. Now, a lot of people think that when you meditate that you are turning your brain off. That could not be more true. It's impossible to turn your brain off. And the type of meditation that I teach my clients is actually uh, more of a performance-based uh, meditation. So there's usually a reason behind it or something that you're trying to train your brain to do. So for the basic starting meditation, set your, your cell phone timer for 10 minutes. So just a basic timer, set it for 10 minutes. As soon as you wake up, couple that meditation with something that you already do. So you might usually go in and get some water or go use the bathroom, brush your teeth when you wake up in the morning. Start coupling your meditation with that thing that you already do so that it becomes a habit. Sit in a comfortable upright position. This isn't a lying down meditation. It's a different type. It's more of a savasana and relaxation. This is charging up your body and charging up your energetic centers to be able to get really clear on what's most important for you that day and also what your highest truth is. What are the things, what are your somatic responses that you're hearing or feeling in your body that you need to start focusing on or paying attention to? Listen to, to those. Those are your instincts. That's your body's innate ability to communicate what your deepest and, and highest truth is. So when I wake up to meditate, one meditation form I use is a gratitude meditation. So I first start with some breathing. So I might be doing just an equal inhale and exhale through the nose, pumping the stomach. So it looks like this. Give it a try. And so that type of meditation will help to bring more oxygen to your brain and allow you to um, get a little bit more focused and clear uh, for the day so that you can give yourself that extra dose of oxygen and in conjunction with, you know, if you have coffee or green tea in the morning, in conjunction with that. So after about two minutes of some breathing exercise, that's just one example. There's many different examples of breathing exercises you can do. Alternate nostril breathing, Kundalini has a ton of breathing exercises. Um, so after about two to three minutes of breathing and getting that oxygen and blood flow to the brain, I go into a gratitude practice. And I know generally who I'm gonna be interacting with that day. So I take a moment to really check in with who I'm going to be seeing, what I love about that person, what brings me joy about that person, why I'm excited to see them. So I'm basically having gratitude for each and every person that I know I'm going to be interacting with that day, whether it is um, students, whether it's my clients, whether it's uh, different flow state of mind coaching clients I'll be working with or different people that I have meetings scheduled with. I go through and visualize that so that when I do get into a conversation with them and I actually have that meeting or that engagement, I've already prepped myself to come into a higher vibrational space where I'm ramping up my heart energy and, and able to connect with people more. So give that a shot. See if it doesn't improve your relationships and your interactions and, and get you started in your day in a high vibrational state. Second thing you can do is journaling. So daily journaling, it's kind of a lost um, art, but it's coming back and I think for me it's been really helpful because I can see my progress and I can see my track my own personal development. So I'm staying accountable for creating positive behavioral change. And one simple journal entry that you can do is a gratitude entry. So just going into who you're grateful for, why you're grateful for them, what opportunities you have that you're grateful for. So give it a shot. Again, just bringing up your energy so that you start your day really focused and really clear and coming from a place of love. A few other things to help you tap into flow and make positive behavioral change. We've got mantras and affirmations. So a mantra is just a simple empowering statement that you can say during your meditation if you run out of things that you're grateful for and you want to have a, a mantra. Maybe um, I am... I am strong, I am able, I am capable. That's one mantra that I use with many of my clients uh, that are working towards uh, making changes in their physical body, in their physical vessel. So go ahead and write down right now a mantra that's meaningful for you, something that you want to train your brain to start believing and thinking. 
an affirmation is basically the opposite of a fear. So if you can tap into, firstly, you can write down with your journal, write down what's your biggest fear that's holding you back from really pursuing your dreams and pursuing the life that you want to live. And so take a moment, write down that fear, how it plays out in your mind. And now take a look at that fear. Ask yourself if it's completely and totally true. Probably not. It's probably uh, a thought that you've created in your mind to induce suffering without even consciously knowing about it. So hanging out in your lizard brain, in your uh, lower functioning brain centers to remain in fight or flight. So as you examine that fear and decide whether or not it's true, if it's not true, how can you create an affirmation that's actually the opposite of that fear? So one of the biggest fears that people people have that I work with is financial security. I'm not going to have enough money to do XYZ or I'm not going to be financially stable so I must keep doing XYZ. I must keep doing the thing that I'm doing. So in examining that fear, is it completely and totally true that you won't be financially secure? Well, you're financially secure right now. You have a roof over your head. You have money, uh, some money in the bank. You have money to buy groceries and buy the things that you need. So you actually are secure. So let's get rid of that fear and, and flip it around into an affirmation and just a simple example your fear might be different but a simple example would be I have everything that I need and I am working to uh, create a mindset of abundance and then through that action of creating a mindset of abundance you can start to draw like energy to you so maybe that just by having that aff- affirmation it might subconsciously shift your actions into doing things that are um, taking you closer and closer to creating another income stream, another revenue stream. And the last, the last thing you can do to tap into um, a positive flow and make, make long-lasting behavioral change or ritual. So just a simple ritual that you can do. If you have anything that is um, unsettled in your life, maybe you have a relationship with another person, a coworker, a boss, something that you weren't able to fully say, you can do a simple ritual action of just writing a letter not to send. So being able to communicate and voice all of that unrest on a piece of paper that's private and safe, and then just a simple ritual is to get rid of that, burn it somehow, burn it in a safe place. Like allow yourself to put intention into releasing the energy that has been holding you back about that specific situation. Secret number two. Learning to leave multitasking behind. This is a big one, and we're really, really married to being busy. Like we are, we have created this um, automatic response to being busy and being in fight or flight. So much so that it actually becomes. It feels like it's the new norm. So in leaving multitasking behind, uh, the first step to doing that is to differentiate your tasks. What is a creative task, and what is a productive task? A creative task requires original brain power, original thought. So this would be something like writing blog content, writing website content, creating a a brochure for your services, um, creating online videos, online courses. That's creative content. And in order to really tap into that potent creative uh, creative space, there's a lot that kind of needs to be cleared out of the way to really get there. So the three other uh, pillars, you can think of them as different intensity actions. So we've got productivity. So that's all of our emails. That's all of our uh, proposals that we're writing, or um, that's just our daily tasks of going and logging into websites. You know, when it takes you five to ten minutes to remember, remember passwords and get through all the, the gates in a website, that would be counted as, a, as productive activity. So in leaving multitasking behind, you're going to separate your creative time and your productive time. So first get the creative, or sorry, first get the productive work out of the way. So you can do that by just... Uh, categorizing all of your tasks. I usually do this on like Sunday evening. I categorize all my tasks for the week. I put them into their different areas, either creative work, productive work, research, or self-care. Um, so write down all of that productive work, uh, work task, and then start to, with my planner, start to put them into different days. So when I see I have a two-hour chunk and I want to really focus in on Clear space for my creative work. 
research. That's another category. Sometimes I need to research different platforms. I need to do scholarly research where I'm drawing upon academic research to build a proposal, say for corporate wellness or um, new research for a new online course that I'm creating. That's a separate area and that needs its own sort of time frame. So uh, categorizing all of your different research tasks into uh, just writing them down in your planner and putting them into different different days that's one of the best ways that I know of of, re- of uh, releasing multitasking self-care self-care also needs to be scheduled because if we don't put it into our calendar oftentimes it won't get done so things like going in and getting a massage getting body work done getting energy work done going to yoga um, any other self-care things that you need to do with your physical body so maybe going in and getting dentist work done or Um, Things like things that involve taking care of yourself. Um, Those are definitely uh, needed in letting go of multitasking so that you can have the energy to do your research, your productivity, and your creativity. Third secret, how to remain present and in tune with everything that you do. So that really comes from flow state of mind practice. So think about the thing that you love doing that you want to do more of. Maybe it's painting. Maybe it's um, drawing. Maybe it's spending time with your loved ones in nature. Maybe it's taking the trip that you need to take and unplugging completely. How can you start to train your brain to be in that flow state of mind? Do it often so that when you step into your work mode that you can take that same sensation, that same feeling of flow state of mind and transition it right into the work that you have to do. So I hope you enjoyed the three... um, the three ways to step into more flow in your life and I hope that you can start taking action on them even if it's just one. Um, so one thing I uh, want to offer you is that we are in our, int- in our introductory week of our group Flow State of Mind coaching course. So if you liked anything that you heard and you want to create some momentum um, on your projects or create some momentum in your life on doing personal development and, and starting to take action on small things, small rituals that are going to clear space for bigger work later on, I strongly, strongly recommend that you join our course. Um, the, the full write-up is found on my website. You can uh, click down here, and I think there should be a button kind of appearing here uh, from our tech guy, but read it, read up on it, see if it resonates with you, and I'd love to have you in the course. Um, it starts really, really soon, so don't delay and take advantage of it. The total value of the program is over $800 and I'm offering it for uh, $397. So it's a really valuable course, four weeks of group coaching. We'll be doing uh, potent strategy calls just like this where you get an hour of time with me and I'll be coaching you on uh, different aspects of building momentum and building your business. And I would love to see you there. Thank you so much. Oh, final, final last thing. I had two questions before I ran this webinar. So one of my uh, former Flow State of Mind coaching clients, he did the one-on-one and now he signed up for the group course. His question to me was, um, how much time do you actually spend on creating content? Now, that's a really good question because for me, I've built a lifestyle where now the majority of my time is in creating content. I still do a small amount of coaching, but um, it is batched into small concentrated times where I see my coaching clients and then I reserve the rest of the time to create new content. So as a ritual for me, I'm generally spending a minimum of two hours, if not four to six hours on content creation. And that's usually two to three times a week. So I follow a four day wave. So I basically move from self care where I make sure I nourish myself, eating good food, doing my yoga practice, doing my flow practice, move into research mode, which is my low intensity day. Then I move into productivity, clearing out all my uh, tasks. So email proposals, um, email coordination, managing, uh, doing design work with my designers for different seminar posters and things. Then I peek at creative work. So for me, that creative time is sacred. When I get into a creative creative time I have my essential oils I light candles I make sure that I'm I'm actually most creative at night so for me that's when I tend to do my creative work Um, so it can last anywhere from two to four hours if I have a full entire day to myself sometimes I'll go into a longer day maybe um, six hours at the most but generally two hours is is how much I how much time I spend on creative time and two to three times a week and the small consistent steps of of having that time to create content over a long duration of time, that's how I've been able to uh, 
um, create many online training programs and online courses and coaching courses because I'm, I'm chipping away slowly at a larger project and being consistent with it. So even if you don't have the luxury of having that much time right now, how much time can you carve out of your day? How much, what can you give up or what can you say no to to allow yourself to have more time to create and work on those creative projects that are really your passion projects? Let's see, and the, the last question was, what if I work 40 hours a week and I'm overly tired and I'm stressed, how can I start implementing these principles? So an easy one would be just to wake up 15 to 20 minutes earlier for a meditation and journal practice. Uh, it might seem like you're going to be tired at first, but start doing it, start training your brain, eventually you'll adapt and you will start to reach into those deeper um, passions that you have and start listening into your highest truth and and subconsciously you're going to shift out of that fear state and into more of a state of flow which allows you to really get into the work that you really truly care about thank you so much for tuning in it's been a pleasure to do this webinar and i hope that you got something out of it stay in touch with any questions you can shoot me an email uh, through my website summerhuntington.com if you have any questions or need any clarification on anything thank you so much namaste